All right, so last time I talked a lot about the work I had done on the firmware side, making a custom library uh, and implementing that library for uh, the ability to do micro-stepping and uh, a lot of other different simplified stepping techniques because we now have the custom functions that are built in with the custom library that I made. So that's now implemented in the Arduino firmware. Uh, it made the code a lot smaller and really simplified things by getting a lot of those functions out of the main code and putting them in a, a separate library function. So what I wanted to talk about though is uh, this is the processing sketch that we're making uh, and this is really what I've spent the past three days doing is trying to make a, a graphical user interface for what we had already accomplished before but before we were using uh, this console down here uh, which really isn't viable because if we're going to send this to a, a customer they can't be trying to look at source code and, uh, and opening up uh, processing each time they want to run the application. So uh, we now have a working graphical user interface, which is what this is. Uh, some highlights here, I, ha I ended up using a control P5 library that I downloaded online that made it really easy to add things like a list box or different buttons, different text boxes and things like that. Uh, you know, and easy is a relative term. Making GUIs is not a simple thing to do. So it's still taken a long time, but it was a lot easier than trying to use the default uh, functions and things available within processing. I then also had to use uh, this finite state machine logic uh, that I implemented using uh, switch uh, case statements and basically the reason for that is let me get down to the function here uh, with processing the only time it redraws the interface and it redraws what's on the screen is when it runs through this draw function. So for example if you run into uh, some kind of a sub function and you stay in there for three minutes doing something it'll never redraw the screen. So I had to do something where I could define the state. So here I'm defining the, the state one is startup. Uh, what I would do is I would set uh, my, my state equal to one and then it would go and do everything here and then it would run back through the draw statement and then jump to whatever the next state was. And for example, if you're sending a file, it may stay in the same state. But this way, every time it, it exits this, uh, this switch statement, goes back through the draw loop and then comes back to the case it's supposed to be in every time it does that it will redraw the interface and it was kind of a pain to do it like this but because of how processing is written processing uses Java to make these applications um, just because of how it works that's what I had to do but the one good thing uh, is that you can really easily go to file export application within processing and you can export this application to work on any platform because it's written in Java so that'll be really nice when we send it to the customer they can use it on whatever machine they have. So uh, without further ado, let me show you the actual user interface here. Uh, and this is running on a Mac platform, if you haven't figured that out already. But I've tried it on a Windows platform. It works exactly the same. Uh, and it's it's pretty, we tried to make it as easy to use as possible. Um, if we accomplish that, uh, I don't know, that's up to you. But basically right now we have we have three buttons. We have a connect button. Uh, a stop button, a send file button, and then we also have this text box for sending individual commands. So the first thing I'll do here is, is hit connect. Uh, on the Mac, we have all of these different uh, COM ports that are available. Uh, you really always want to use this one that's highlighted here. Uh, so if you enter zero on the keyboard, it'll wait for a handshake from the machine, and there we go, the machine's authenticated using that COM port. So now we can do something like enter a custom command here, so G0, which is a rapid movement, to the location X5, hit enter, and uh, you guys can't see this on the screen, but uh, I'm looking at the machine and it's whizzing away, moving to that location. So uh, all of those commands work. We have about 10 different G codes that work and probably about 10 different M miscellaneous codes that also work for doing things like turning on and off a spindle, for turning on uh, a light, for all kinds of different things like that. So the big functionality though is that you can go to select file and uh, I'll just pick this, uh, this is making a, a little mini mug uh, part if we were doing some kind of a FDM printing application. So you can select that file and you see right away uh, the interface here starts sending all the different G codes. So these are all movement G codes that it's sending to the machine. Um, and basically what it does is it sends one command and then waits for confirmation saying the machine has made it to that position. Once it makes it there, uh, it starts sending the next command. So you can see it's just uh, going through all the different commands. There's about 4,000 commands in this file, so we've also added this really nice progress bar at the bottom to let you know how far through the file you are. 
So if you do a build that's supposed to take an hour, it doesn't do any time computations, but it will tell you when you're halfway through the file, uh, which will probably be relatively close to the time it takes to do the build. So you can see it started to inch along there. Um, as it keeps going, it'll keep getting further and further. So in addition to that, uh, we're able to stop the build uh, and send a command to the machine during mid-build, which is pretty neat. You can't do this in a lot of other software. So M201 is a, a command we have that turns on a light that's on the machine. So say, uh, I don't know, maybe it's getting dark and you want to be able to see what's actually happening. Uh, again, you can't see this, but the light just flipped on. And then you can do a resume and go right back to where you were in the file and keep sending commands. So uh, that's really nice that you can stop it uh, right in the middle of a build. And, you know, also you might have something happen where uh, maybe the machine has screwed up and it's ruining the part. You could really easily stop it here. Uh, it'll stay stopped until you resume it. So you could go to the, the machine and actually, you know, maybe try to repair the damage. Uh, maybe your, uh, your part became unfixtured, so you could maybe tighten it back down or something like that, and then come back and hit resume. So it's really nice. We, we also tried to uh, make this kind of bulletproof. So, for example, if while it's running, you try to do, uh, you try to connect again, it'll say we're already connected. If you try to send a file, it'll say, uh, wait till the current file's done sending. If you try to send uh, another command like we did before, it'll say you can't send commands while this is running. Um, so we really tried to make it uh, good from the point that they won't be able to screw something up on their end and the build will go on uh, without a hitch so you can see the progress bars inching along there so I won't make you I won't make you wait for the uh, entire build to finish but that's where I'm at after about three days of working on the uh, GUI and uh, probably keep working on the firmware here and updating all of our capabilities uh, on the machine side because uh, at, at this point sending sending a uh, G code to the machine. Uh, that's really much. That's really pretty much all we want for this uh, to be able to do. So I think we've accomplished that pretty well. It looks decent, not great, um, but I think it'll work for our purposes.